Oh, Buster, why can't you be a good car? <sighs> yep, of course, Buster's back to its usual self, being busted Buster. Well, so I think I have a problem. I'm not sure, which is the whole point of the video. I'm gonna verify if I have said problem or if there is something weird going on. So it's kind of like a diagnostics video. So uh, long story short, I've noticed that in a lot of the logs, like I've been logging the car like crazy, obviously, you know, I've been fighting the tune with it. So tons of logs. I've noticed something weird with the spark, um, the ignition timing. I've actually mentioned this in the last video of uh, testing the water methanol system, how one cylinder, cylinder two specifically, was falling behind the rest. And um, someone's like, well, you know, did you check the compression? I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with the mechanical components of the car. That's why I'm gonna test a few things here. But before I do some testing, let me go ahead and show you this log that I took earlier today, show you what's going on. So here is a log I did a little bit earlier today. This was nothing crazy. I was just kind of logging similar things, but it shows you exactly what is going on. So uh, you can see here, this is my spark graph. I have cylinders one, two, three, and four, and my RPM. That's all the lines you're seeing here. Under light throttle, do you see something interesting? See these lines up here? That cylinders one, three, and four. This yellow line, that's cylinder two. Look how much that deviates away from the rest of them at part throttle. It's pulling back and that cylinder only five degrees. That's nuts. And you see that throughout the run, uh, throughout the log. See, there's another spot where it is light throttle. That cylinder is the only one trimming back. Sometimes it will even out like that, but a lot of times it will be retarded behind the other cylinders. Sometimes it's not. So it's intermittent when it happens. Sometimes at high load, that happens. So what I think it is, it's a failing ignition coil. So I've already switched to these out. So cylinder two is right here. This is a problem cylinder. Before I switched them out with cylinder one, I had to swap these two coils. I was noticing the same thing in this cylinder. So right now, I'm gonna swap back, now that I have a data log from today, I'm gonna swap back and I'm gonna see if the same trend follows where the coil goes, just to verify. So this way I'll know that it did it here, switched it to here, did it here, switched it back here, did it here again, definitely the coil. So we'll go ahead and just make quick, easy work of this. All right, cylinder one, set that to the side. Cylinder two, put in the cylinder one. And then this one back over here. That one's plugged in, that one's plugged in. Now, all I have to do is just go back out and just log it, just like I was. You know, just part throttle, normal driving, taking off, and I wanna see if that uh, negative timing, that spark retard, follows the coil back to cylinder one. So, let's get on the road and see what happens. So I got the logger rolling here on the laptop. Just gonna get down the road. Just do a casual cruise down the road, nothing crazy. And I wanna see exactly what happens with this ignition timing here. If all goes the way I think it will, that retarded timing will go into uh, cylinder one. We're about to find out. So after a little bit of driving, uh, kinda see something going on here. Got a big hill coming up for my house. I'm gonna give it some beans, load it up real nice see what happens. So yeah, 
it. Got some data here. I guess I'm gonna take a look at it. See, uh, see what's going on. There may actually be a little bit more to the story than I thought. Well, taking a look here, as you can see, this white line, guess what cylinder that is? Well, that's not cylinder two, that's cylinder one. So now, cylinder one's being pulled back from the rest. Interestingly enough, cylinder two is still doing some wonky things, but you can see here, look, here's a dip right here. Um, yeah, look at that, yeah. So you can see, I think, now that I move those coils around, look how they are different from the first run. But here's another one, cylinder one, pulled back. Over here, cylinder one, pulled back. Yep, yep, yep. Could it be something else? Maybe. However, I think these coils are I don't know. I don't think they're doing well. I think they're having some issues um, with getting the spark out and, and, you know, coils, they're weird. You know, you can have intermittent issues where they can be fine and then they can't and they always do weird things at weird times. And I've noticed the car, actually, the car seems like it's idling a little bit smoother now than it was earlier. Let me do something real quick out of my curiosity. Now that I feel like the car's idling a little bit smoother, I want to check and see my ignition timing, yeah, it's only deviating one or two degrees where before, literally the log I showed you earlier, the spikes were like a lot higher. Um, it was deviating eight degrees or so at idle. Now it seems to be fine. The only thing I did was move those coils around. So that's a little strange if you ask me. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to uh, get a new set of coils here in the near future. Not worried about it right now, but as you can see, there's definitely something weird going on, ignition related. Obviously, I just showed you, just things change just by switching and moving coils around. So there's a little weirdness going on with those coils. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Ford coils are just, they're, they're not known for their longevity. Every Ford I've owned, I've had to replace coils on. I'm trying to think of the other Fords I've had. Um, my first car, the Taurus, uh, that used the distributor. The 5.0 Mustang used the distributor, and that coil was all changed out from factory anyway. Um, the factory Cobra coils were meh. Um, I had to change those out. The SHO's coils, I had to switch out because one of the coils was misfiring under load. So I changed them out for MSDs, uh, and now it looks like Buster. So I'm gonna get some performance coils himself, and I'll keep the stock ones as backups because it definitely seems like there's something going on. Um, so I'm not sure uh, who I'm gonna get coils from, but I feel like this might be a good opportunity to check out a product that is, you know, a toss up whether it's good or bad. I feel like the only thing I can say is it's definitely overpriced for ignition coils. I usually get MSD. Me not getting MSD is going to be, um, you know, I've always, I've always had luck with MSD. I've always gotten MSD stuff. I've loved MSD wires, uh, specifically the superconductor nine and a half inch wires. Oh, I put them things on everything that needs spark plug wires. They were the best in my opinion, um, and in my experience. MSD coils have never, they've always been the replacement, you know, for failing OEM ones for me. And I haven't had a problem. I know people have problems and, you know, it's always subject to change, but this time around, I think I'm gonna play the, my cards a little differently, go with a different brand and some very high output coils. Maybe there'll be a performance gain, but that's, you know, that's gonna be a little bit because Buster's nickeling and diming me here as the, uh, you know, quintessential fixer repair daily special, and uh, I just can't do it. As much as I love you, Buster, you got to give me a break. So yeah, with that said, cools sometime soon. Otherwise, just gonna, you know, keep working on the other things I'm working on here on the Buster and try to kick out some content here um, with doing some more fun stuff, I guess. But until then, I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for the next Cars Creative video.